recording. So I decided to do kanji a little bit different at the time rather than having you just spell things out slowly. We're just going to be like, remember what it looks like when we get certain kanji. So this right here is yoru. Do you know what yoru means? Yoru is, is night. It is night. Perfect. Okay. So what's the pronunciation of this kanji? Uh, yoru. Yes, yoru. Um, how would you read this word? It read as yoru osoku. Perfect. So osoku, you might know as meaning late. So yoru osoku means late in the night. So it's very late, like midnight-ish. Yoru osoku. Um, so okay. guy. So this kanji can also be pronounced as machi and means city. But if you have it like attached to a word like this, it gets pronounced as guy. And it actually means like the word district. For example, this right here is a city and it has a district over here, which is Tasogare Gai. And then it has a different district over here that has a different name, um, like Akebo no Gai or something like that. Um, so it's just a way to split up a city. Tasogare means twilight. So Tasogare Gai together, what do you think this means? That's a twilight city. Twi yes. Tazo but got it. District yes. would be more um, appropriate. The twilight district. Tazo got it, guy. Hi. Um, so, how is this kanji pronounced? Guy. Perfect. Um, can you read the sentence for me? Yoru osoku, Tazo got it, guy. This. Ita. Hi. In this context, it should be ni ita. Um, do you know what this means? Yoru osoku tasaregai ni ita. When the night, mm. when it's late in the night, the yes. the twilight district become uh, appear or became. That's a good guess. However, this sentence, the subject isn't here. There's no subject here. The subject has been dropped, so we don't actually fully know who is doing the itaing, but it's probably not tasarare gai because the tasarare gai is a district and most districts don't have feelings. So ita uh. is a past tense of iru, which means to exist. So if you said tasarare gai ga a atta, that would mean the twilight district exists late at night. Yoru soku tasarare gai ga atta. So over here, with the ni here, that's supposed to be here, not there. Um, this means I was in, I in this context, I was in the Twilight District late, late, late at night. Late at night, I was in the Twilight District or someone was in the Twilight District. You know what I, koto means? Koto. Um, the container for... Yeah. E e events. Yep, container it's a container for, for like events or like things. Perfect. So if I said tasare gai no koto da means this is some this is all about tasare gai, all the events in it, things like that. It kind of acts as like a container like you said to kind of envelop the district of twilight. So it's a little bit different if I added a de here, which basically makes this means like at so this is events at the Twilight District, rather than just saying everything about the Twilight District. So this is talking about a specific event. So something happened in the Twilight District, or some. In this case, it is is happening or happens often because of the tensing right here. Um. So let's go read this sentence from the book. Yoru osoku. Tasso gare gai de no koto datta at midnight or at the late night. The things, the things of the twilight district. Close. So is. it could mean the things, but koto can also refer to like one kind of event. It basically means it happened 
um in the twilight district late at night would be like a way you could say this like so koto is kind of like a filler word so if this there wasn't in here you'd be correct then that would just be the things of the twilight district that happens late at night but the de makes it just this is a location that happens to be where the koto is occurring um you also see de koto in like a word like deki koto deki koto um that's the same koto right here which literally is able to do things but this means incident and it's normally a relatively negative word like it doesn't have to be negative but it just means like something happened the incident deki goto so this koto doesn't mean all incidents in this context it's just kind of the event that happened um an incident so this is just an event that happened in Tasurare Gai rather than all the events of Tasurare Gai. Okay. So, mm -hmm. do you know what Dorobo meant? Yes, that was our word from last week or so. Dorobo was thief. Yes. So, your job right now is to remember that the second half of Dorobo was bo, and it looks like that. That's the bo part of Dorobo. Um, can you I... read this word for me? Dorobo. Oh, next page. It's ill load soon. <laughs> uh, fukuro. Hi. Fukuro means bag. Fukuro. Um, so how do you read this word right here? Specifically this kanji. Bo. Yes. Dorobo no bo. Um, do you know what this word means? Naka is to be in or yes. inside of something. Yes, inside, the middle, perfect. Hi. So last time we've used no before, so I do believe you know how it works. Like majushushi no madoseki is the magical stone that belongs to a majushushi. I want you to say the sentence, a thieves bags insides, which we have naka, sukuro, and doro what? Hmm. Inside the thieves bag is dorobo no fukuro naka. Hi. Um, we can, naka is a noun and so is fukuro. So you'd have the no after there. So it'd actually be um, dorobo no fukuro no naka. Um, you will see naka um, attached to things without no. And in that case, it will normally be pronounced as like chu. Uh, for example, um, jugyo. Sorry, I did that wrong. It's ju and then uh, gyo, short ju. This right here. And if you add naka to it, it's ju gyo chu, which is during class rather than just class. Um, so, uh, but yeah, normally when it's naka being pronounced that way, we're going to have, it's going to be attached to something with no. Um, so you learned the bo part of dorobo. So now your job is to memorize the doro part of dorobo. Uh, doro kind of means dirty. This as a random point of information. So it's kind of like dirty stick, in case you're wondering what thief is in Japanese. Dorobo. Dirty. Hey. So yo is a na adjective. And it basically is the same as the English word like, but not like, like, like. Like, it's not like saying, I like pie. It's like, like, as in the simile, like, which we'll be seeing it soon, not in the next slide, but the slide after that. But first, how do you read this word? Dorobo. Perfect. Okay, so now we're talking about similes in Japanese. So here's that word, yo, which I told you is an adjective. So with right here, majutsushi, what kind of thing is majutsushi? Is that a noun, an adjective, a verb? What is it? It's a noun. It's a noun. So when you attach a noun to yo, the simile like, you're going to use no. Because noun, no. is That's how nouns glue to things. However, when you attach yo to a noun, you're not going to use no, you're going to use na, because yo is an adjective, specifically a na adjective, not a e adjective. What do you think majutsushi no yo na dorobo means? Um, a stick. Oh, I'm sorry. A, a theme. theme that looked like... <laughs> Hi. Yep. Specifically, it's a thief like a magician. So the word luck isn't in here. So earlier we learned ni niteru, niteru, 
which is the be to be similar like like that but that's like literally the word to be similar this is actually for similes so she's like a flower or a thief like a magician like it's it's a way to um you add metaphors into um japanese so um, you'll see like full on sentences, for example, that will end with yona to describe something um, that this thing is not. Um, so so since we can see how that works with the yo between noun and noun, how do you think you would say night like a thieves bags insides? Or a night like the insides of a thieves bag would be a better English sentence. But this is I just thought that the bad grammatical English sentence made it make more sense for translating? So, um, inside of a thief's bag is um, dorobo no fukuro no naka uh, no yona yoru. Perfect. That's exactly what you would say. Yep, that is perfect. Right. Okay, so this right here is an adjective, specifically an E adjective. Can you read it for me? Kurai. Kurai. Do you know what that means? Uh, it means shadowy or dark. Kind of, yeah. Dark, shadowy, dim. Perfect. So your next kanji, your post number number, is the kura part of kurai. Kura. How do you read this word? Makura. Perfect. So weirdly enough, makura is not an e adjective and instead is a na adjective. Isn't that strange? <laughs> so <laughs> makura is no yeah. longer kurai. So, but at the same time, both of these are referring to dimness. Kurai is just dark and dim in general. Ma adds a completely kind of word or like super. So makurai means totally dim, super dim, super dark. You also will see it with mashiro, which means completely white, or makuro, which is completely black. So ma is super common in Japanese to mean completely. Hi. So let's go read this sentence from our book. Dorobo no fukuro no naka no yona makura na yoru. So, uh, in English, we probably would the start night, there. Hi. The night that is completely dark, like the like the inside of a thief bag. Perfect. Nice. So this is a really interesting thing in Japanese that a lot of people struggle with because we we have two different words for this in English, so it's hard to wrap our hands around. But with question words, if you add mo to it, that's kind of like adding no or every, depending on the kentex. So the question word where in Japanese is doko. Where? Doko. If I wanted to say nowhere, I would say doko mo um, nai. So that means nowhere. Doko mo nai. Uh, or doko mo inai, depending on um, if we're talking about something that has feelings or not. And if I want to say everywhere, we'd say dokomo iru or dokomo aru. So the iru and the aru parts, oh, sorry. So whether or not um, it's going to be positive iru or aru or negative inai or nai is going to tell us whether or not this is nowhere or everywhere when we add mo to things. Um, do you know what nani means? Nani is what? So what does nani mo mean? Um, everything. Mm -hmm, it does. It means everything or it means nothing. So in English, we do sometimes see things like that. Like we say, I don't know nothing or I don't know anything. Like we'll say both of those and it means the exact same thing. That's kind of what um, these mo can kind of do to these words. So how do you think you would say no one is here? You, you can choose to use koko or it, it is um, insinuated by context if you don't have koko in here. But dare means um, who? So it's koko de dare mo nai. Yes. Um, so dare 
as a verb means who, do you think if we're using who towards something that they may or may not have emotions? Um, I think it could be used for both. I would or... say um, in English, uh, who is actually only really supposed to be used with people. And it's kind of the same with um, Japanese. So you're kind of supposed to assume that they have emotions. So it would be dare mo inai. Um, that's why we have dare versus nani. So nani is what and what could be used for things with emotions or things without emotions. But a lot of times you'll assume they're not going to have emotion if we're using uh, nani. So if I say, what's that? I might be referring to someone's pen. But if I say, who's that? I'm more likely referring to a person like, oh, who's that you're talking to? Versus what's that you're talking to? That sounds like, are you am I, are you talking to a phone or something? A wall? Mm. So that that just kind of has to do with um what the question word insinuates who you're talking about. But there's definitely contexts where you might see the other versions just because there's acceptance in everything, especially in media. <laughs> Hi. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Uh, can you read this word for me? Tori. Hi. So <laughs> tori sometimes is a verb, but if you since I don't have it in do form here, I'm talking about the noun tori, which means street. Street tori. Um. Okay. Can you read the sentence for me and tell me what you think it means? Tori ni dare mo nai. Uh, I'm sorry. Toro ni dare mo inai. Hi. What do you think At this means? At the street. And no one at the street. No one yes. on the street. There's no one on the street. So um, this is like a really, uh, probably a really confusing thing about ni and de is that iru and um, aru is kind of an exception. It kind of has to do with like what the verbs mean. But basically, iru and aru, when we're talking about a stationary location, we use ni, even though with all other verbs, you use de. It's just one of those like random exceptions, which isn't actually an exception just because of what the words mean. Uh, like literally, <laughs> in a way, if you're existing, you're like continually going towards something, perhaps might be a way to think about it. But for our purposes, we'll just say it's an exception with iru. So that's why it's ni versus de. It's, it just has to do with the verb. Uh, but yeah, no hmm. one's on the street. Okay. To so this exist. Right yes. At a location. Okay. Yeah. Existing. Okay. So this is something that is really confusing people learn Japanese, especially since I feel like the way people teach it, they kind of just wave their hand and say, you'll learn it eventually. And that's the difference between wa and ga. And what's really confusing is that they're different depending on what they're marking. So with subjects, if wa is marking the subject, that's kind of just a statement. We're not really expressing anything special. If I said, um, could you read the sentence for me? It's dorobo wa iru. Yeah, that just means there's a thief. I'm not adding any emotion or insinuating anything. But I said dorobo ga iru. Then I'm basically telling you the most important thing about the sentence is the dorobo. In English, this would be like stressing the word thief. A thief is here, is what you'd be saying. Um, so, <laughs> so this would be telling us the topic. We're saying this right here is what I'm talking about versus this right here is just kind of plain. So you'll see both of these in equal amounts um, in Japanese. But what gets really confusing is objects. So in Japanese, you might learn um, ringo ga suki. You know what this means? Ringo ga suki. It's mean apple is, the apple make me want to like it. Kind of. Uh, with uh, when you say you like something, you use gasuki to so say "watashi wa ringo gasuki" means I like apples. That is the default thing is that you use ga here because ga can mark objects of sentences. Specifically, um, I'll, I'll go into that later. What what kind of objects it can mark? So it can mark an object. In which case, this is just the normal object marker. If I wanted to, you could actually replace this ga with wa. So this means wa is not marking the subject in the sentence right here. It is marking the object. 
when I say Ringo Wasuki, I'm letting you know that I love apples. I mean, yeah, apples. So with these two sentences, it kind of insinuates something. So if I had someone said, Nanigasuki, which is what do you like? You're probably going to answer with Ringo Gasuki. I like apples. It's just a normal conversation. But if someone's like, oh yeah, do you like, you like oranges, right? And you hate oranges. Oranges are disgusting. You've told this person 20,000 times that you hate oranges. You might respond with Ringo Atsuki. It is Ringo's that, I, it's apples that I like. So you will almost never see this. The Ringo Atsuki. Mm. That's like very aggressive while you're being like, I like apples. Unless maybe if you're having a conversation with someone and you keep on forgetting that they like apples. But that's how... Can I ask? Yes. In this case, is suki a verb or is or is mm. that an, um, an adjective? Suki is a weird word. Um, specifically, it is um, an adjective uh, to mean like, and you'd end it like a sentence with da, suki des. Um, so this would actually be like suki da. Mm for example. Um, well, so in this case, it's not, it's not a verb. So I can't say I like the apple. It's, it's not so, the verb. It's not the act of. So that has to do with um, the difference between like a verb versus a copula, um, which is basically really, it's like a gra grammatical thing that people don't really know in their day-to-day -day life. So in English, if I say I like apples, the like here isn't actually a verb. It, it's a copula is what it, what it is. Basically, you can't be doing likeness is the idea. This is supposed to be a description of the subject is uh, what a copula is. It's not actually doing an action. It's just describing the subject. Like, my name is Bob. You're not really doing is in the sentence. You're not doing anything. We're just describing the my as having a name. My's name is described as Bob. So that that's what a copula is. And in Japanese, suki is 100% only a copula as it's very obviously marked by um, da. I mean, it's a, not a verb, but it's marked by the copula da to kind of allow us to tell you this is describing the subject of the sentence which would be most likely I. Uh, theoretically, you, if you have, if someone's like, oh, does Bob like um, oranges? And you've told them 20,000 times that Sam loves, that Bob loves Ringo's. You could also say, Ringo Asuki. But uh, that might be if, like you're a fangirl, you know, like you're very- I honest. have a question here as yeah. well. So in this <laughs> case, would it be proper for me to say Ringo Asuki? Sadly, no. So this is something I was going to talk about later. And this has to do with, um, I'm not sure if this is the correct grammatical term, but O marks direct objectives. Direct. Ga marks, I would call passive objects. The idea of the difference between these is that a passive object means you're not, the ver there's, there's no real control over you doing the verb toward the object. There's no actual like choice in this. Well, oh, there is a choice. And the plan is I have um way down over here is basically my I'm skipping way over here to kind of have the difference. So right here we have the verb nagareru and nagasu. These are the same verb. They both mean to flow in English. They're both to flow. However, in Japanese, they make a difference between um, the word is like intransitive and transitive, but I'm just going to call this the passive. <laughs> it's not what it is, but I, I can't remember which one it is. And this is the not, not passive. Um, so if I said, majitsushi wa kawa o nagasu, this means that the magician has power and he's going to make flowing happen to the river. The magician makes the river flow. However, normally rivers just flow. There's no real control going on here. It's just the river, it flows or it doesn't flow. There's no like thought process, no kami coming down and being like, river flow right now. And the river's like, okay, I guess I'll do it. 
There, there's no control going on here. And that's the same thing with liking things. You can't just make a decision that you like something. You can't just be like, mm, today I'm going to like popcorn. It's, it's my favorite thing now. Humans don't work that Wait. way. Can I make a decision on what I like? Theoretically, it's, like, it's, like, well, it's like, do you have a food you don't like? Anything that tastes disgusting? Mm -mm. No. <laughs> yes, but isn't there also a case where you can decide to like or decide not to like? Is yeah. is that a case? In that case, Does you could like probably allow? use O for that. But it, in general, it's kind of the idea of the verb, whether or not that allows. So like, kimeru, kimeru is to make a decision on something. So if you're going to like say you want to make a decision, you're going to like something. I wouldn't be sure what exact sentence you would make to do that. Uh, but it would probably have kimeru in there. <laughs> you need kimeru. Uh, which, in which case, mm. you probably would have o in that subject after um, ringo. But you can't really just say ringo o suki because the, the verb itself does not have the decision-making capacibilities in it yet. The tsukida doesn't, it doesn't have the capacity to make a decision. So you would have to add another verb here to add the decision capabilities just because of how the grammar in Japanese works. But yes, I if, if I believe that if you were going to do that, uh, but since I'm not Japanese, it's probably best for you not to try making that sentence. <laughs> uh, that is a very nuanced topic. Very nuanced. Yeah, so that's why teachers just skip it. They're just like, you'll learn eventually. Just it, and that's why people like they go like, oh, I kind of know what it is because you learn it just as um you get the feeling of like whether or not your what a topic is. But anyway, with that, when we're talking about um particle ni, you can also attach wa to it to also make it that the thing is the topic, right? So this is wa, not a tar attaching to the subject, but the topic. So if I said soko ni wa ikasenai this means literally i will not let you go there and the wa is here is because i'm making it explicitly clear that i'm not letting you go here this place very important you're not allowed to go here if you could go anywhere else i don't care but you're not allowed to go here so um when you learn niwa officially it's called like restricting like it's called restricting the subject or whatever restricting the topic of the sentence because all we are is talking about this we don't care about anybody else in this sentence so only for this location will i not let you go there so that's why sometimes you'll see niwa because it's saying this is what's important just there okay so let's go read the sentence from the book <laughs> So, tori ni wa dare mo nai, dare mo inai. Hi. So, only for the street. Yes. No, dare, dare, somebody, right? Da, mm -hmm. dare, da, yeah. It's either no everybody, one yes. Yep. There's no one on the street. And we're talking about a very specific street in this case, tori ni wa. There's no one on this street. Um, specifically probably the street where the main character is where the incident happened right so he said it happened when i was in tasoraragai that was our first sentence of this paragraph and now he's like the street is empty but we're specifically saying this street is empty perhaps the streets in the don district aren't empty we don't care about that we're talking about right here right now he's in an empty street that is super empty mm. um do you know what this word is kawa a river perfect and what's this verb? Nagareru. Do you remember what it is? Yes, to flow. Hi. And do you know how this is read? Kawa. Perfect. Kawa, river. So here is when we were originally supposed to be talking about a passive object versus a direct object. So in Japanese, there's also passive form, which is something you can conjugate verb. So as I told you, this is actually like transitive versus intransitive, but it's still... Uh, is the same thing really as passive. It just sometimes verbs exist as a passiveness <laughs> rather. So theoretically, these are actually, these have two different dictionary action, um, entries versus miru and mieta might not. Actually, mieta might have. I don't know. Uh, anyway, ignore that. But basically, do you know what miru means? Miru, to look. Yeah, to look. So if I said, um, 
Con o miru. That means to look at con. It means I'm taking the power of myself to force myself to look at con. I have power in the situation. However, miru is to be able to look. So if I said con ga miru, it means, oh, I can see con. So it just is about the ability to do something versus me have forcing myself to actually look at con. So that's kind of another way to kind of show how they're different. Um, so if you see O, oh, it insinuates the subject has power over some kind of decision making going on with the verb versus ga, it just is happening. Hmm. Okay. So kiri means miss or um, fog. Same ish word. So if you ever watch Naruto, Kiri, you might remember as mist because of that. <laughs> because the village of mist is like the Kiri, I don't know what the Kiri Buddha or something. Um, can you read the sentence for me and tell me what you think it means? Kiri ga nagareru. What does this mean? The mist flow. Perfect. The mist the flows. Fog. Yes, the fog flows. Hi. And right now is our halfway point where we're switching the Zoom meeting. So you just click the same Zoom meeting as before, and we'll be meeting right back. So I'll see you in two seconds.